Open YouTube and search authentic recipe and see what comes up. There's no authentic recipe for pierogi, which is what we are fixing today. So click the like button and share this video with all of your friends. Results are personalized, so what you see may be different from me. But I see two recipes for spaghetti carbonara, two Spanish paellas, authentic teriyaki chicken, and Lebanese tabbouleh. How many of them are actually authentic? Well, let's say all of them. How many of them you can use to make an authentic dish at home? Oh, well, that's a different question. And the only answer to it is, it depends. If you've never tried the dish, how will you know if what you cook tastes authentic? Recipes have a lot of information, but they do not have a taste sample. At least not until YouTube finds a way to transmit taste through a phone. The carbonara you cook, should it taste more of eggs or cheese? Should it be creamy or more like scrambled eggs? How much should it taste of garlic? Is the pepper there just to enhance the taste? Or is it meant to be slightly spicy? There is an infinite number of dimensions on which a recipe can vary that are subtle and, and impossible to talk about in a video. Even if the recipe is authentic and you follow it to the letter, it may still not taste like the real thing. Authentic local dishes rarely have just one recipe. See, I come from Poland, so I know how to make pierogi. My entire family knows how to make pierogi. So let me give you an authentic, original, true-to-life recipe for pierogi. Pierogi are made of two parts, the dough and the filling. The dough, this one is simple. Take 500 grams of flour, 250 milliliters of water, 5 grams of salt, 10 milliliters of olive oil. Mix flour with oil and salt, heat the water to 70 degrees and mix it all together until it's smooth and elastic. That's your dough. Take 200 grams of potatoes, boil it almost to the point of falling apart. Cool it and mix it with 100 grams of cottage cheese. Take a small onion, slice it, sear until translucent and mix it in. Season with salt, pepper and mayoran. Roll the dough about 2 to 3 millimeters thin, cut circles from it, fill them with, the, with filling and stick the edges to make pierogi. Then boil them until they float on the surface and for about a minute more. Serve with creme fraiche, browned onion and optionally bacon. Simple, right? So if you ask me, my mom, my grandmother and my great-grandmother, you would get four different recipes. My mom would not use olive oil, but rapeseed oil or sunflower oil. She's also not the biggest fan of onion in the recipe. My grandmother would add a lot of onion, but would use sunflower oil only, because that's healthier. Her dough also had eggs and was closer to what you may know as Italian ravioli. My great-grandmother would probably use clarified butter. The proportions of potatoes to cottage cheese and fillings also vary, from almost exclusively potatoes all the way to half and half with cheese. The type of cheese varies as well. Cottage cheese is what I use these days, but if I was doing this in Poland, I would use Tvaruk, which is a similar cheese, but it's less salty and much harder in texture. We haven't yet talked about my wife. See, she learned how to make pierogi from me. It wasn't a thing in her family, but now you know she has a strong opinion about which spices go into the filling. She claims I taught her differently the first time and doesn't really like mayoran that much. So now at home we skip mayoran and I think my kids will learn the dish this way. This is typical for any traditional or authentic dish. Traditional authentic dish dishes are passed through generations, frequently slightly modified, adapted to changing times, product availability, evolving tastes and so on. Also, the recipe you get from one family may be completely different than what you would get from another one. And when families meet, recipes present in both collide and mix. Which means that authentic recipes you find on YouTube are at best a variant, an authentic recipe, not the authentic recipe. And you should treat them as such. If you want to recreate an authentic dish that you tried somewhere and loved, they're a great starting point. But if you've never tried the real thing, be it in a restaurant or while traveling or at a friend's place, don't expect that what you cook will taste like the real thing. Most likely it won't because you do not have a good reference for what it should be. That, however, should not stop you from using the recipes for dishes you've never tried as an inspiration. 
I, I use it all the time. I'm European and I've never tried an authentic American apple pie, but that never stopped me from trying to recreate it. What I cook tastes much like Polish charlotka, but who cares, it's still delicious and looks pretty authentic. On that note, I hope you'll try my recipe for pierogi. It's super simple and very tasty, and hopefully you can add something to it on your own and make it authentic in yours. This channel is small with just a few subscribers, so I have all the time to answer all of your questions about this recipe or authentic recipes or anything really, so feel free to reach out in comments. Also share, like, subscribe, all the jazz, and I'll see you soon.